Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion states that the resultant force F exert on a body is the product of its mass M and its acceleration A. That is F equal to M A. Look at for a fixed mass M the accelerations A is proportional to F. That is A proportional to F. Greater force has greater acceleration. Next for a fixed resultant force F we have the acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. That is, accelerations proportional to 1 over m. That means, greater mass has smaller acceleration. Let's look at three body diagrams in the following cases. In the first case, the block is pulled by a string on a smooth horizontal surface towards the right. The free body diagram on the mass M is its weight W, normal reaction R, and the tension of the string T. For case 2, a block of mass M is pulled to the right by a string on a rough horizontal surface. The force on the mass is its weight, the normal reaction, the tension of the string, and frictional force. Case 3, a block of mass M slide down an incline plane, which is a smooth incline plane. The force on the block is its weight, normal reaction only. In case 4, a block of mass M is moving downward along a rough incline plane. In this case, the force acting on the mass is the weight, the normal reaction, frictional force. For case 5, a block is pulled by a string upward on a smooth incline plane. The force acting on the mass is the tension of the string, its weight, the normal reactions. In case 6, the block is pulled by a string upward along a rough incline plane. In this case, the force acting on the mass M is tension of the string is weight, the normal reaction, and frictional force. In case 7, two blocks of mass M1, M2 with M1 larger than M2 are connected by a string which passes over a pulley and the pulley is connected to the ceiling. In this case, the force acting on M1 is the weight and the tension of the string, and the force acting on M2 is its weight and the tensions of the string. Case 8, two blocks 
of mass m1, m2 are connected by a string that passes over a pulley. M2 is initially on a smooth surface. In this case, the force acting on M1 is its weight and the tension of the string. And the force acting on M2 is the force of the string, its weight and normal reaction. In case 9, if now the two blocks M1 and M2 are connected by the string passing over a smooth pulley as shown, and M2 is moving on a rough surface, then we have the force diagram on M1 is still its weight M1g and the tension of the string T and the force on M2 is the tension of the string and frictional force. Also, we have its weight M2G and the reaction force R. Example 1 The force diagram shows that we have tension T weight W and reaction force R since R equal to W we have reaction force equal to W equal to mg which is equal to 2 times 9.81 equal to 19.6 Newton for part A by second law, F equal to MA, the lead force is tension only, therefore we have T equal to MA, acceleration A equal to T over M equal to 5 over 2 equal to 2.5 liter per second square. Example 2. The force acting on the block is tension, friction, weight, and R, normal reaction. By second law of motion, we have F equal to MA. The lead force acting on the block is T minus F equal to MA. T minus Frictional force is free, equal to m zero point five times a two. Therefore, the tension of the string will be equal to four newton. Example three. The force acting on the block is its weight mg, and the normal reaction R by resolving its weight mg into two components along the incline plane is mg psi 30 degree and the force perpendicular to the incline plane is mg cosine 30 degree let the accelerations of the block is a by Newton second law f equal to ma we have mg psi 30 degree equal to MA implying that A equal to G psi 30 degree which is equal to 4.91 meter per second square for part B we have MG psi 30 degree is balanced by the normal reaction therefore R equal to mg cosine 30 degree, which is equal to 1 times 9.81 times root 3 over 2 Newton. Example 4. 
the force acting on the mass is the weight normal reaction and frictional force again mg can be resolved into two components perpendicular to the plane is mg cosine 20 degree and the component along the plane is mg side 20 degree since the ball is stationary therefore we have friction equal to mg cosine 20 degree equal to 1 time 9.81 cosine 20 degree equal to 4 newton for part B, if the incline angle is increased to 30 degree, then the left force will be equal to mg side 30 degree minus friction. Therefore, we have ma equal to mg side 30 degree minus friction. 1 time a equal to 1 times 9.81 psi 30 degree minus 4. In this case, the accelerations A equal to 0 0.05 meter per second square. Example 5. The spacecraft carried by rocket launch vertically into the space and the total mass of the spacecraft and the rocket is equal to 10 to the power 6 kg and the average acceleration equal to 5 meter per second square what is the average uplifting force provided by the rocket From the diagram, we draw the force on the spacecraft together with the rocket. One of the force is its weight, and the other force is the uplifting force provided by the rocket. By F equal to MA, we take upward as positive. We have left force equal to uplifting force U minus weight W equal to MA. U minus the weight is equal to mg, which is 10 to the power 6 times 9.81, equal to 10 to the power 6 times 5. Therefore, uplifting force equal to 1.48 times 10 to the power 7 Newton. Example 6. The force acting on the trolley is its weight, normal reaction, friction, and the force applied 24 Newton. And the applied force 24 Newtons can be resolved into two components. The horizontal component is 24 cosine 40 degree while the vertical component is 24 psi 40 degree. Let the acceleration of the trolley is A towards the right and taking direction to the right as positive then we have F equal to MA the left force is 24 cosine 40 degree minus friction which is equal to M A 24 cosine 40 degree minus friction is 2 newton equal to the mass is 3 times A therefore the acceleration of the trolley equal to 5.46 meter per second square for part B since there are low vertical motion 
vertical forces are balanced, that means the sum of the reaction force, which is upward, plus 24 side 40 degree, which is also upward, equal to the weight, which is acting downward. Therefore, we can find out by subtracting 24 side 40 degree by weight, which is equal to mg3 times 9.81. Therefore, the reaction force, or we say the supporting force, equal to 14 Newton. The car is moving to the right with uniform acceleration A. Let's draw the forces acting on the mass M. There are tension T, the weight W. The horizontal component of T is T psi 35 degree and the vertical component of T is T cosine 35 degree. By F equal to MA, we have T psi 35 degree equal to MA. Since the upward force equal to the downward force, therefore we have T cosine 35 degree equal to its weight W, which is equal to mg. By dividing equation 1 by 2, we have tangent 35 degree equal to A over G equal to A over 9.81. Therefore, the acceleration of the train A is equal to 6.87 meter per second square. Example 8. The force acting on the bob is T mg in each case. We draw the tension and the weight. The train is moving to the left. In each situation, for case 1, we have a component of T psi theta towards the left by F equal to MA T psi theta equal to MA therefore in case 1 the train is moving to the left with acceleration. For case 2, since the tension is vertically upward, which balances the weight only, T equal to mg, there is no horizontal component for tension T. Therefore, The horizontal less force F becomes zero. That means the acceleration is zero. In this case, the train is moving to the left with uniform velocity. For case 3, the component of T along the horizontal directions is T psi theta, which is towards the right. Therefore, the less force is equal to minus T psi theta. If we take 
motion to the left as positive. By f equal to ma, we have the accelerations becomes negative value. In this case, the train is moving to the left with deceleration.